Well, good morning, brothers and sisters. Just a quick message. Got to work today. <clears throat> Saturday morning. <clears throat> Ready to get to go to work, but I wanted to give you something to hold on to. And John chapter 14, starting at verse 16, it says, And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever, even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but you know him, for he dwelleth within you, and shall be in you. And then in verse um, <sighs> 25, it says, These things have I spoken unto you, being yet present with you. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. What I want you to get this morning is the importance of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit lives inside of you. He's the one that teaches you God's word. When a man or woman of God preach the word, if the word is in error, you will have an unsettling discomfort in your spirit, which will allow you to know that, hold on, this isn't the word of God. <clears throat> when Jesus is speaking through the man or woman of God, through the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will have this comfort, this peace, this serenity that will bring joy to you because you're like, wow, that's the word of God. And condemnation comes from the devil. Conviction comes from your Holy Spirit. So when your Holy Spirit is talking to you, it's uplifting you, it's encouraging you, it's edifying you. And even when it's chastening you, there's a certain form of peace that's coming because you know that this is correction and not condemnation. For God didn't come to condemn the world, but to save the world. <clears throat> so what I want you to focus on is your Holy Spirit. Look through the Bible, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. He's the one that was left here to guide us back home. He is so vitally important. Once you tap into the Holy Spirit, you tap into everything else. In Romans 8, 26, it talks about how the Holy Spirit intercedes in prayer for us because the Holy Spirit knows our needs, but he also knows the mind of God and the mind of Jesus, and they're always connected together. Remember <clears throat> in John chapter one, it says, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God and the word was God. And then it goes down to verse 14 or 16 and it says, and the word became flesh. So when Jesus became flesh, at that moment, he became flesh to die in our, in our place. When he left, he told him in the book of Acts chapter one, verse eight, wait here until you receive power from on high. That power was and is and will always be the Holy Spirit. And that's the one that comes and dwells inside of us. He becomes your personal navigator. So when you start praying, you just have to think, I'm going to pray to, to the Holy Spirit. And I'm going to seal that prayer that I'm praying in the name of Jesus that's going to God. So see, they're always, in, they're, they're always collaborating, connected together. So I just want you to focus today. Today, ask Jesus to reveal the Holy Spirit to you. Bring him into your life. You know, in the book of Acts, it also says that they didn't know who the Holy Spirit was. And a lot of people are always, you know, I love Jesus. I'm saved. I got Jesus. But you, you got to get the Holy Spirit. That's the most vital part of your walk on this earth at this time is to have the Holy Spirit. Seek him out. Read your Bible, go to the back of your Bible, go go get you a commentary, go get you, you know, a concordance and read up on the Holy Spirit. I read this really beautiful <clears throat> book about the Holy Spirit because the fruit of the Spirit is, you know, love, joy, peace, happiness, kindness, meekness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. All that comes from him. We don't have that. He gives that to us. He's also one that gives us the gifts 
in First Corinthians uh, 13, 12 or 13, it talks about the, the gifts of the Spirit. He is the one that is so important to you. So please, today, connect with your Holy Spirit because he has a lot to say to you. And Father God, I ask for strength today. Even on my day off that I got to go to work, Lord, I ask that you bless me to be a blessing, Lord, for where you are sending me is to be with the the autistic and the disabled folks of this of this community, Lord. And I pray that you would give me power to minister to them and to, to touch them and anoint them and even bring healing on them if it be thy will, Lord God. I'm asking that you move through me, strengthen me, guide me, protect me, and lead me in the way that you have called me on this day. And as I pray for my brothers and sisters reading and listening to this message, Lord God, and getting into their word, that you will reveal your Holy Spirit to them, Lord God, that you will touch them. There are so many people out there asking for prayer, Lord. My prayer mirror is getting filled up, Lord, and it's such a blessing, Lord, to be able to intercede and pray for these brothers and sisters. And a lot of these prayers are not even for them, but for their family members, their friends, Lord God, and their spouses and their children. But I ask that you bless each and every person that is requesting prayer that's not for them. But I ask that you bless them with strength, with encouragement, Lord God. Bring a vitality upon them today that will anoint them from heaven, Lord God. Allow your presence to seep into them in a way like never before. Have a visitation with each and every person that is listening to this prayer this morning, Lord God. And I ask that you have your way in all of us. Guide our footsteps, Lord, down the pathway of righteousness for your name's sake. And I ask all this in the name of the Father, the name of the Son, and the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, God bless you, my brothers and sisters. Time to go. I pray that this was a little bit of inspiration for you. I didn't want to not run out the door without giving you something to, to nibble on. Here's something to think about. Read John, the book of John, chapter 14, 15, and 16, and see all that, because it's all in red, which is Jesus talking but it will give you a truer understanding and meaning. And when you read um, Romans chapter 8, it talks about the movement of the, of the Spirit as well. And so that will give you a good beginning. God bless you and have a good day.